All right, what we're going to study in this video is how to calculate the length of a curve using integration. Okay, so let's start with something pretty simple. So I pick two points in the plane, x1, y1, and x2, y2, and I draw a straight line between these two points. All right, now if I ask you what is the length of the straight line, you certainly know how to calculate that, All right? So the length is gonna be given by the square root of first the difference in y coordinates square plus the difference in x coordinates square. Right? This is just an application of Pythagorean theorem. All right, but that was too easy. Now suppose that I still have my two points, but instead of a straight line, I have a curve that joins these two points. Now if I ask you, what is the length of the curve here? That is a little more complicated, right? You can't just use Pythagorean theorem here because it's not the line anymore. So how can you calculate the length of this curve? So this is what we're going to study in this video. But first, let me be a little more precise. So I'll assume that the curve here is the graph of a function f of x, and I'll take the initial point to be the point a, f of a, and the final point, the end point, to be b, f of b. And I want to calculate the length of the curve y equals f of x, between a and b. So how can I do that? Well, the idea is always the same when you use integration to solve problems. You want to sli slice the problem into little slices and then sum over slices. Okay, so how can I come up with a slicing here? So what I'll do is just slice the curve in the x direction. And now let me zoom in that little slice to see what we've got. So the curve looks like something like that. And then I'll draw the width and the height. So I'll call this thing here dx, and this the height here dy. All right, so what I want to do is calculate the length of the curve over this small interval. So how can I do that? Well, if I take dx and dy to be very, very small, then as a first approximation, I could approximate the curve as being a straight line. Right? This would not be a precise calculation, but if dx and dy are very small, that would be a good calculation, good enough. And if I take dx, the width, and the height dy to go to zero, so if I take the limit when they go to zero, that will become a precise calculation of the length of the curve. All right, so let me call this curve segment here bs. And if I assume that it is well approximated by a straight line, then I can calculate its length because ds square is just equal to dx square plus dy square, right? This becomes a right triangle, so I can use Pythagorean theorem. So in other words, I can take the square root because the length is always positive. So ds will be the square root of dx square plus dy square. And then I'll do a little trick here. I'll divide by dx square. So I'll get 1 plus dy dx square. And I can take the dx out, and I end up with the square root of 1 plus dy dx square times dx. And that gives me the length of the curve segment here, if I approximate it as a straight line. Now I've kind of cheated a little bit here because I've divided by dx and then said that this actually becomes a derivative. That's, you know, that's cheating. That, you can't do that. But actually, all of these steps can be made rigorous using the chain rule. And if you are interested, you can look up at the textbook where it is derived in a different way. All right, so I could also rewrite that in different notations. So dy dx is the derivative of the function f of x. I can rewrite that as being 1 plus f prime of x squared times dx. And that gives me the length of the curve segment. All right, so now I'll basically sum over slices. That's always the second step. Remember that summing over slices really mean that I'm going to take the width to be of a len zero. So I take the limit where dx goes to zero, and then I, I sum over all slices, so that becomes a definite integral. Uh, it's a limit of a Riemann sum. So I end up with the statement that the length of the curve here will be equal to the integral. So if I integrate in the x variable, I have to start at x equals to a, finish at x equals to b of the curve segment. So in other words, integral from a to b of the square root 
of 1 plus dy dx squared times dx. And this is how you calculate the length of an arbitrary curve between two points. All right, so let me work through an example. Suppose that I want to find the length of the curve y squared equals x cubed between 1, 4, and 4, 8. So I'll start by sketching a graph of the function. So y squared equals x cubed actually defines implicitly two functions, one which is the positive branch of the square root, and the other one which is the negative branch of the square root. All right, and then I'm interested in the length of the curve between the two points, 1, 4, which is somewhere like here, and 4, 8, which is here. Well, the first thing you can notice is that over this interval, y is always positive, right? So I can actually pick the positive square root, and I end up with this, uh, a unique function, which will be y is equal to square root of x cubed, or x to the 3 half. Right, so I don't need to care about the negative branch because I'm only interested in the length of the curve between the points 1, 4 and 4, 8. So I want to, to use this function and calculate the length of the curve here. So the first step here to apply the formula that we just derived for the length of the curve is to calculate the derivative of y with respect to x. So dy dx is very easy to calculate. Here you get 3 half times square root of x. All right, the second step is to calculate typical slice. So recall that what I'm doing here is slicing the problem like this, then calculating the length of each, of each of these little curve segment. And I've calculated the formula, so ds, the length of the curve segment, was the square root of 1 plus dy dx square times dx. So I can substitute in there what I've just calculated. So I end up with 1 plus 3 half square root of x squared times dx. And I can simplify a little bit. That becomes 1 plus 9 over 4 times x dx. All right, and then the last step is to sum over slices, which as always means integrating. So to calculate the length of the curve, what I'll do is integrate between the x-coordinate of the left point of the interval, which is 1, to the x-coordinate of the right point, which is 4, of ds, which we've just calculated to be square root of 1 plus 9 over 4 times x dx. All right, so I need to evaluate this integral, so how can I do that? I'll use a substitution. u is equal to 1 plus 9 over 4 times x is du is equal to 9 over 4 dx. And this is definite integral, so I also need to change the limits of integration, right? So x is equal to 1 becomes u is equal to 1 plus 9 over 4, which is 13 over 4. And x is equal to 4 becomes u is equal to 1 plus 9 over 4 times 4, which is 10. So putting this back in my integral, I end up with, so I substitute dx, dx becomes 4 over 9 du. The integral becomes the integral from 13 over 4 to 10 of the square root of u du. All right, so I find the antiderivative. This gives me 2 thirds u to the 3 half, evaluated between 13 over 4 and 10. And substituting, I'll get the final answer, so I'll just simplify a little bit here. 4 over 9 times 2 over 3 gives me 8 over 27 times 10 to the 3 half minus 13 over 4 to the 3 half. And that would be the final answer for the length of the curve y equals to f of x, so y is equal to x to the 3 half between the points 1, 4, and 4, 8. Okay, so let me end this video by summarizing what we've said and generalizing it a tiny bit. So if you're given a curve defined by y equals f of x and you want to calculate its length between x equals to a and x equals to b, what you want to calculate is a definite integral from a to b of ds, where ds stands for the length of the tiny curve segments, 
And we've calculated that ds was equal to square root of 1 plus dy dx squared times dx, where dy dx stands for the derivative of the function f of x with respect to x. Now, we could have gone through the exact same reasoning if we were given a curve defined by x is equal to g of y. Right? So if you want to calculate the length of this curve between the points y equals to c and y is equal to d, so now you're thinking of everything as functions of y, then you would end up with a definite integral between, between y equals to c and y equals to d of ds. And to get ds, the length of the curve segments, we would have done the exact same calculation. So we would have started by uh, started with ds squared is equal to dx squared plus dy squared. But instead of dividing by dx squared to get the formula, we would have divided by dy squared. And we would have ended up with this equation, square root of 1 plus dx over dy squared times dy. And here, dx over dy stands for the derivative of the function g of y. Now, I haven't done that explicitly because it's the exact same derivation, so there's really nothing new here. But when you're working uh, in terms of functions of x, you use the first formula. And if you're working with functions of y, then you want to use the second formula. But my tip is that you shouldn't try to remember these formula. Uh, all you have to do is remember how we got them. So all you need is to know the Pythagorean theorem so you can calculate the length of this tiny uh, curve segment, uh, starting with ds squared is equal to dx squared plus dy squared. And now, depending whether you want to use x as your variable or y your variable, you divide by dx squared or dy squared, respectively, and you will end up with, with these formula for calculating the uh, length of the curves.